Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over five worked examples to show you how to do problems involving irradiance and distance from a point source. Now, if you haven't already done so, check out my previous theory video covering investigating irradiance and the inverse square law, as watching that video will help you understand what we do in this one. So let's get into it. Question 1a says the relationship between irradiance and distance from a point source is an inverse square law. Explain what is meant by this statement. Well, we can say it means that irradiance varies inversely with the square of the distance from the point source. Or in symbol form, we could say i is directly proportional to 1 over d squared. Part b then says a very small lamp illuminates a picture on a wall 1 meter away with an irradiance i. The lamp is moved away to a distance of 2 meters. Find the new irradiance in terms of i. Well, writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the new irradiance, so let's call that i2. And we know that the initial irradiance doesn't have a value, we're just going to use i for that. So we could say i1 is equal to i. We then have the first distance d1 is equal to 1 meter, and the second distance d2 is equal to 2 meters. So writing down our equation relating irradiance and distance from a point source, we have i1 d1 squared is equal to i2 d2 squared. Substituting in the numbers gives i times 1 squared is equal to i2 times 2 squared. So i times 1 squared is just going to be i, and that's equal to 4 times i2. So we have i is equal to 4i2, or if we rearrange for i2, we get i2 is equal to a quarter times i. In other words, the new irradiance is a quarter times the initial irradiance. And that's because we've doubled the distance, and that comes back to part A, which is our inverse square law definition. So if we double the distance, we quarter the irradiance. Lastly, part C says, what are the units of irradiance? Well, remember we saw this in the theory video for irradiance, and the units are watts per square meter, Wm to the minus 2. Question 2a says to sketch a graph to show the relationship between irradiance i and the inverse square of the distance from a point source 1 over d squared. Well, remember if you carry out an experiment to investigate the inverse square law for a point source of light, if you plot irradiance against 1 over the distance squared, you should get a graph that looks something like this. So irradiance on the y-axis against 1 over distance squared on the x-axis should give you a straight line through the origin, i.e. a directly proportional relationship. Part B then says to explain why this graph confirms the relationship i equals k over d squared, where k is a constant. Well, we can say that the straight line through the origin implies that i is directly proportional to 1 over d squared. So we basically now just want to get from this to this. So remember, to get rid of this directly proportional sign, we can replace it with an equal sign as long as we multiply this thing on the right-hand side by a constant. So we have that i is equal to a constant times 1 over d squared, or in other words, i equals k over d squared, where k is our constant. Question 3 says the irradiance of light from a point source is 20 watts per square meter at a distance of 5.0 meters from the source. What is the irradiance of the light at a distance of 25 meters from the source? Well, we're trying to find the new irradiance, so let's call that I2. We know that I1, the initial irradiance, is 20 watts per square meter. We know that the first distance, D1, is 5.0 meters. And we know that the second distance, D2, is 25 meters. So writing down our equation, we have I1, D1 squared equals I2, D2 squared. Substituting in the numbers gives 20 times 5.0 squared is equal to I2 times 25 squared. And what you can then do is the left-hand side in your calculator, so that's the same as 20 times 25, and then divide both sides by 25 squared to get I2 on its own. And if you do that in your calculator, you should get an answer of I2 equals 0 0.8 watts per square meter. Question 4 says a point source of light produces an irradiance of 10 watts per square meter at a distance of 40 centimeters from a light detector. The light source is moved and the new irradiance is measured to be 0.7 watts per square meter. Part A says, has the light source been moved towards or away from the light detector? Justify your answer. Well, we just need to look at what the irradiance is doing. So initially, we're at an irradiance of 10 watts per square meter, and then it's dropping by quite a lot to 0.7 watts per square meter. So that means our light source has been moved away from the light detector, and that's because irradiance is greatest closest to the point source and decreases as you get further away from the source. Part B then says to find the new distance of the light source from the detector. So we're trying to find the new distance, the second distance here, which we can call D2. We know the initial irradiance I1 is 10 watts per square meter, and the initial distance D1 is 40 centimeters, which we need to convert into meters, which is 0.4 meters. And the second irradiance I2 is 0.7 watts per square meter. So writing down our equation, we have I1 D1 squared equals I2 D2 squared. Substituting in the numbers gives 10 times 0.4 squared equals 0.7 times d2 squared. If you then do the left-hand side in your calculator and then divide by 0.7 to get d2 squared on its own, you should get d2 squared is equal to 2.3. And then we can take the square root of both sides to get d2 on its own. So if you do that in your calculator, you should get an answer of d2 equals 1.5 meters. 
Lastly, question 5 says a higher physics student carries out an experiment to investigate how irradiance on a surface varies with distance from a small lamp. Irradiance is measured with a light meter. The distance between the small lamp and the light meter is measured with a meter stick. The apparatus is set up as shown in a darkened laboratory. So here's our small lamp, our point source, and that's our light meter. And then we've got a black cloth underneath on top of the bench top and a meter stick to move the light meter to different distances. It then says the following results are obtained. So we have distance from the source in meters and a radiance in units. So the distance goes up in point ones from 0 0.2 up to 0 0.5. And you can hopefully spot what's happening to the radiance, which is just measured in units here. So as the distance goes up, you'll see the irradiance is decreasing. Part A says, what is meant by the term irradiance? Well, remember we saw the definition in the theory video for irradiance, and it said that irradiance is the power per unit area of electromagnetic radiation instant on a surface, or you can simply just say the power per unit area. Part B then says, use all of the data to find the relationship between irradiance I and distance D from the source. Well, if we look back to the question, the only data we're given is from the table. So that means we want to use all of this data here to find this relationship. So what we can do is for each column of data on the table, we want to show that i times d squared is equal to a constant, i.e. that the answers are roughly the same. So looking back at the table, we've got four columns, so we're going to have four different calculations here. So we want to show that irradiance times the distance squared is equal to a constant, because that is the equation from the relationship sheet i equals k over d squared, but just rearranged for i times d squared equals k, i.e. the constant. So so if we can show that doing i times d squared for each of these columns gives us roughly the same answer, then we've shown that it's a constant. So for the first column, we have 675 times 0 0.2 squared, which is equal to 27. We then have 302 times 0 0.3 squared equals 27.18. We then have 170 times 0 0.4 squared, which equals 27.2. And lastly, 108 times 0 0.5 squared equals 27. So notice how all of our answers are coming out to roughly the same value of 27 if you round it to two significant figures. And therefore, we can say that i times d squared, a radiance times the distance squared is equal to a constant. Part C says, what is the purpose of the black cloth on top of the bench? Well, the reason for this is to prevent light from reflecting off the bench and interfering with the results. And it's good practice to do this if you're carrying out this experiment in the lab. Lastly, part D says the distance between the small lamp and light meter is now increased to 1.00 meters. State how the new reading on the light meter compares with the one taken at 0 0.50 meters. Justify your answer by calculation. Well, first of all, we're being asked about what happens to radiance when the distance is doubled from 0 0.5 meters to 1.00 meters. And remember the definition of the inverse square law tells us that as distance is doubled, the irradiance will quarter. So that means we can say if the distance is doubled, the irradiance will quarter, and we want to justify that by calculation. So let's use some numbers here to try and prove this. Looking back at the table, first of all, remember we've got a value for irradiance at a distance of 0 0.5 meters. So that means we could call this our first distance D1, and we could call the first irradiance I1 108 units. And we're also told about the second distance in the question, 1.00 meters. And that means it's a good idea to try and find the second irradiance, I2. So we can do this using our equation i times d squared equals a constant, and we can do it in terms of our second distance and second irradiance. So we want to find i2, so if we do i2 times d2 squared equals a constant, we can say that this is equal to roughly 27, because that's what we found when we used all of the data in part b. So that if we then plug in our second distance, which is in the question here, we have i2 times 1.00 squared is equal to 27, and that's just the same as i2 times 1 equals 27, which gives us i2 equals 27 watts per square meter. And remember from the table, we have that i1 is equal to 108 watts per square meter. So what we could do here is just divide i2 by i1 to show that i2 is a quarter times that of i1. Or you could do I1 divided by I2 to show that I1 is 4 times that of I2. So if we do I2 divided by I1, that's the same as 27 divided by 108. And if you put that into your calculator, you should find that it's a quarter, 0 0.25. So therefore, if we rearrange this, we can multiply both sides by I1 to get an expression for I2 in terms of I1. So we have I2 is equal to a quarter times I1, i.e. a radiance quarters when the distance is doubled. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching, if you made it to the end I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video one of these, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.